And so it's this human thing we have to kind of resist risking uh, looking silly or making a mistake. And I would argue our education system definitely influences this, that we're brought up to think that, no, no, better, better, you know, wait until you're absolutely certain that you're going to do really well and not look silly and not fail and not make a mistake before you try. And I know that the confidence, you gain confidence in action. You gain confidence in actually changing the emotional state in your body. And in order to do that, you have to take action. Hey guys, so our very special guest for tonight is Miss Megan Swan. Megan is an integrated wellness and business coach who specializes in helping powerful entrepreneurs optimize their wellness so they can step into a CEO mindset, have magnetic energy and confidence to start taking aligned actions to follow their dreams. She has had over 10 years of integrated wellness experience as a certified IIN health coach, a plant-based chef, a yoga teacher, and a CEO. She has been her own boss for the last 10 years. Now, at age 30, she sold everything to embark on her own eat, pray, love journey of sorts. And now, at age 42, she finds herself still on her first stop where she fell in love with one of her English students. She and her husband have two beautiful boys and two adorable dogs. They love to travel and explore the lesser known beaches of Mexico. Now, Megan is very passionate about connecting with others worldwide to exchange ideas and practices in the world of wellness and online business. And she's really optimistic because she believes that we are on the brink of a wellness and women in business revolution. Let's welcome Megan to the show, guys. Hey, guys, welcome to another episode of Five Years to 40, the podcast dedicated to millennials who are talking, thinking, and taking tremendous steps towards a fascinating life. My name is Anisha, and you know, on this podcast, we like to talk about health and relationships, we talk about finances, we talk about our careers, and we make sure to share information that can help us and support us to have a really fascinating life. Now, at the core of a fascinating life is self-confidence. And that's why, guys, I am so stoked tonight to introduce to you our very special guest, Miss Megan Swan, who is a confidence coach. She's going to tell us what we need to learn, what we need to do to make sure when we step in our fascinating, we're confident from the core. Okay. Megan, thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. You're very welcome. So, you know, let's get right into it. I mean, can you tell our guests a little about yourself and your business? Most definitely. So I have been in the coaching space for five, going on six years now. I started out actually as a health coach and um, really found that, that it's an important aspect of many other things. So ultimately I wanted to work, um, not only on sort of the physical health of someone, but also the spiritual, the emotional and, um, mental health. And in order to do that kind of needed a broader, more holistic base. And, um, that mindset really becomes a huge part of, of any major change we want to make in life, whether it be, you know, like, a a smaller habit or, you know, eating sugar to um, having a more abundant mindset and embodying more self-confidence on the day to day. So it's, it's been a journey and um, I'm really enjoying the ride and uh, my background, I, I'm a certified health coach through INN. I'm also a plant-based chef. I have been teaching yoga for 15 years and I've been um, my own boss for the last 10 years. So, yay! And as a confidence coach, though, it is a very transparent profession because 
you have to oh you have to kind of show up confidently all the time if you're a confidence coach can you can you tell us about that and what do you find most rewarding about that yeah well i mean i think in general particularly in the coaching in the online space um people can read inauthenticity pretty quickly so um in order to be successful essentially you need to be walking the talk and so for me that started with you know um you can think of it as peeling back layers or adding on healthier layers but it was a slow journey of little by little taking better care of myself and different aspects of my life um as i mentioned i started out in like more focused on health and like what i was eating um and then you know i brought meditation into my life then um sleep you know understanding like how profoundly important sleep and honoring our sleep cycle is to our overall well-being and ultimately our ability to be in a good mood and and have positive thought patterns and all these things um but one of the things actually that was pivotal for me was my decision to give up alcohol so i stopped drinking actually had my sober anniversary uh on friday 4 years ago and um alcohol is one of those things where i would have thought in my 20s and 30s that it gave me more confidence and that was one of the reasons that i would in a awkward social situation or if i had to have like a deep conversation with someone it was always quote unquote easier with over a bottle of wine or a few cocktails right and um now after 4 years of being alcohol free and um really seeing all the ways that it was affecting how i thought um my connection with myself and really having like this deep self acceptance self love um because i think that's really the root of true self confidence is 100% being in touch with a who i am the good the bad the ugly all the good you know all the experiences and then really having that integrated in in a way that um i you know radically accept who i am all, all of who i am And so when you get to that point like really nobody has anything on you you know like no one can bring up something that I'm going to be embarrassed about or you know I'm because I've done the work to deeply love and accept even the ugliest parts of myself. Wow. 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 <laughs> I mean I like to think of myself as an authentic person but I have to be completely honest with you with my audience there's still things about myself that I don't like to to speak about and and if I hear somebody like suggest or hint it it gets me in a way but it's something that I'm working on so hearing you be saying that you were able to to work through that and to know that you're able to stand in your power because you know who you are you love all of the parts of you is really encouraging and and it's it's more than likely why you do such an amazing job as a confidence coach because you're you're embracing all of you. Man, let's get into the meat of the matter. We're talking about confidence. And you know, we all have our own versions of confidence and you know, the memes, our meme definitions that confidence is a woman. But you are the expert. So can you break down for us what confidence authentic confidence is? What what does that look like? how do we get that yeah well i think it starts with being just being more open to putting yourself out there before you really feel ready and like i maybe you're ready in air quotes right because you know ready is a lie there is no ready <laughs> like right. even the top world leaders you know very famous people if you read interviews they all talk about um self doubt or you know being nervous at being on stage at xyz event or, and and so it's this human thing we have to kind of resist risking uh looking silly or making a mistake and i would argue our education system definitely influences this that we're we're brought up to think that no no better better you know wait until you're absolutely certain that you're going to do really well and not look silly and not fail and not make a mistake before you try and i know that the confidence you gain confidence in action you gain confidence in actually 
changing the emotional state in your body. And in order to do that, you have to take action and, and get some experience and, and kind of like rip the bandaid off, if you will, the, the peripheral bandaid, which is, you know, you might make a mistake. In fact, you, you will make a mistake. And the faster you get comfortable with making mistakes, the more quickly you're going to succeed because the most successful people in the world have, you know, you just don't know them for their mistakes, but they all have long histories of the, you know, the first career they had or the first 10 careers. And, and it's just really a growth mindset, like a willingness to understand that you confidence comes with taking action with just starting somewhere and gaining that experience and that, and, and understanding your emotional reaction to fear can be shifted into, um, into excitement. It's like, am I really scared or am I really just super excited that this could go well and this could be something I love to do and this could change my life? You know, like there's always a way to reframe our fears about um, looking silly or, or trying something that we're not certain we're going to succeed at. I love that. You know, is it that I'm, that I'm scared or is it that I'm really excited? You know, imagine going to do something that you that is really giving you knots in your stomach and you think, maybe I'm just excited and you just go <laughs> for it. I like that. I love that. That is a, a great way of approaching the things that we're afraid of. And, and, and like you said, so much of our confidence gets challenged when we stay in our heads and we're like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. I'm not sure if people don't like it. I don't know what they're going to say. And, da, 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 da. and you get a lot of, you, you stay stuck. When if we just take an action, whether it, it goes bad or it goes good, we took the action and we get to build our confidence from the fact that we're doing something. So yeah, <laughs> I love, I, I like that you you were able to put that, and I definitely like that reframing to move from fear to excitement. That's easier. That's a fascinating way to look at it. Okay, so comparison is the killer of joy and confidence, right? And I found this, uh, this summary from a clinical psychologist, Rachel Andrew. She made a comment that says, I think what social media has done, sorry, is make everyone accessible for comparison. In the past, people might have envied their neighbors, but now we compare ourselves with everyone across the world. And when she said, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. We're looking at somebody's um, page in, in South Africa. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this. And somebody's page in, in you know, in America, I'm in the Caribbean in Grenada. And you think, gosh, do this. It's like, it's so vast, the comparison, the, the things and people we can compare ourselves with. But how can we gain clarity? you know, on what we want for ourselves so we don't get caught up in that trap of watching and wanting to do this all over the place and, and so we build confidence in ourselves. How do we gain that clarity using confidence? Yeah, well, this is such a big topic. Um, so I think it comes down to boundaries and being really clear with what we are using, where we're using our energy, where we're putting our attention. Like, I truly believe our ability to control where we are putting our attention is becoming a, a scarce resource, <laughs> meaning wow. it's going to be a superpower moving forward. Those of us who can really and truly tune out all the noise. So you touched on a lot of points there. One is just this insane overwhelm of the amount of information. So, you know, you used to know, or, you know, my grandparents maybe in their lifetime met like 500 people. And now, you know, nobody wants just 500 followers. Like that doesn't mean, you know, well, it's a whole other topic about, you know, whether followers are important, you know, they're not um, in terms of, of making a business. But the, the, the reality is, to your point, is that we have so much exposure to the, you know, the, the American way they talk about, like keeping up with the Joneses, this idea that you see what your next door neighbor has, you know, you think about the fifties, oh, they have the new X, Y, Z car, or they have a TV now, or they have a dishwasher. Like we, that's how that all started. But that was before that there was just this massive daily indoctrination of making us feel like we're not enough. 
And so I have very clear boundaries, particularly around social media, um, because you can, you can get really lost. You can get really far down a rabbit hole, either whether it's just feeling, um, you know, the feeling lost because you're, you're exposing yourself to everyone else's ideas and you can't even figure out like what your own ideas are anymore or like feeling less self-confident because you're really focusing on how people look and you want to look a way you don't look, or you want to talk a way that you don't talk. Um, and I think in order to really feel grounded in your self-confidence, you need to figure out for yourself, what do I think? Because right. you have unique ideas, but it's almost impossible to determine what are your ideas if you're constantly consuming someone else's ideas. And so it really back to boundaries. It's about, you know, being very selective about what mediums, you know, who you're consuming and how much, you know, like I actually am very intentional with the amount of time that I personally spend on social media. Like I'm on Instagram, maybe a total of 30, like on a good, bad day or however you want to look at it. If I'm, and I focus most of my attention with connecting, like we did having real conversations in direct messages with people that I genuinely want to connect with and get to know. And, um, I really don't scroll if you will, because that's where you get down this rabbit hole of a, like losing all track of time. B, um, you know, the algorithm is very sneaky and powerful and it's going to be feeding you information. You know, even you don't even have to like something. It knows how long you paused over something. And so it's just going to keep feeding you more information based on what you're, you know, wanting to see or maybe not wanting to see, because there's also a lot of research that, you know, we as humans actually are more powerfully attracted to things that we don't like or we don't want to see. And so you just get down this energetic, emotional, you know, mental health rabbit hole that um, ultimately you have to decide to take back control of your attention and be very intentional about where you're spending your time. Like maybe um, for example, like personally, I have deleted Facebook book off my phone. Um, I, yeah, I think I have two, uh, two like social media apps that I focus on and I have on my phone, everything else. Once in a blue moon, I check in on, on my computer, but it's really knowing like, how do I want to spend my time during the day? If I have free time, I'd rather like listen to a book and really learn something or have like a genuine conversation with someone opposed to looking at a piece of social media content, which has been curated on some level. And I think you know, I, I follow over a thousand people, but there's really about a hundred that I intentionally consume because every single thing that I learn from them is inspiring is, right. you know, it, I feel like it's bringing me up instead of bringing me down. That, yeah. It's funny. If we're not careful, we, we don't even realize that we have the power to do that, to, to put something in place to say intentionally, I'm setting this boundary. I'm not going to be going down a rabbit hole. I'm not going to spend, say I'm going to spend five minutes and then scroll and then you realize, oh my gosh, like an hour is gone. An hour of your whole life is gone from scrolling. So, okay guys, I really think that's something we need to pay attention to, how we set boundaries so that we stay clear and focus on what we want and be able to authentically pursue the things that we, we want to achieve. I really uh, appreciate you for sharing that, Megan. And, and the question of what, what is my, what are my thoughts? Because we, we consume a lot. We consume a lot of food, we consume a lot of ideas, a lot of ideologies, and sometimes we forget who we are. We, our own thoughts become so diluted that we, we don't even know who we are showing up in the world. So that, that was deep. Yeah. That's something I want to add there is, um, you know, I mentioned, and I, I'm a victim of it too, when I have like free time, like we're, we're so over scheduled that even when we have quote unquote free time, you know, we feel like we have to use it effectively, you know, like, so instead of working, I'm listening to a podcast I want to, or I'm listening to a book or, I'm, or, um, you know, I'm doing something or multiple things with my quote unquote free time. And, I 
know that from experience, you know, one, you get the most powerful inspiration and downloads or more often than not when you're physically moving your body. So your, your brain is actually designed to think better when you're moving your body. So it could be walking, standing, running, you know, um, that's why I personally, I, my go-to is, is like five minute dance breaks throughout the day. Or, um, I love to walk on the treadmill as I do my social media scrolling, if you will. And uh, so the point is you also need to be intentional that you're allowing yourself at certain points of the day in a week, at the very least, some white space, you know, like you're, you're allowing yourself to get bored. So even though you have free time, you're not on your phone, you're not listening to someone else's ideas. You're not watching someone else's ideas. You're just doing nothing. Right. And for that, it's it, right now, it's so hard for us to do nothing because we have these, you know, distraction gold mines in our pockets. And so we're, we're losing that ability to really have authentic creative ideas because it comes from those moments where you're just staring out a window or waiting in line at the bank or, you know, doing something that's non desirable. Um, <laughs> And it happens for me when I get those like those flashes. Like sometimes I'm just doing the shit, and I'm like, oh, "Yeah, that's a good idea." So yeah, <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> okay, Megan, we're going into um, this other question. I think that you, I, I know that you'll be able to help us with. Now, as millennials, we are the most certified generation to date, right? Just and while this is a positive trend, because I mean, people have access to more education and it also highlights how millennials feel about being able to, to achieve things. Um, the, the, the downside of it is that very often we get stuck in, in this achievement wheel. Like we, we're not willing to confidently pursue the things that we want to because we always feel like we need to get something right we need to get this other degree we need to get this other um, certificate we need to get this other weight we need to get this other something before we can pursue the things we want and it helps it makes us show up as indecisive um, and insecure especially in our careers and our relationships so as the expert that you are how do we get off this tiring wheel of approval and start to confidently take action and pursuing the, the, the things that we want, more authentic experiences. How do we do that? Yeah, well, I think there's kind of two tracks here. And uh, I help a lot of clients that were formerly in sort of a traditional nine to five thing or in corporate and essentially want to pivot and utilize all those certifications or so their, you know, all, all the the acronyms they have behind their name. And at the end of the day, what they are able to apply is their skill set, their experience, and all of that. And so in the online space or in the non-traditional ways that so many people are making a living now, I think most of us on some level know, but the, like the entrepreneurial mind is this back to being okay with failure and being okay with like looking a little silly. And I would argue one of the hardest things is having this boundary that you don't let the people that are very firmly in this traditional track, like they're a doctor, they're a lawyer, there's something where there, there, there really isn't like a creative way to get to where they are. And, you know, their trajectory is very clear and it's, you know, versus someone who's, you know, trying to get out of that traditional model no, you have to just start somewhere and, yeah. you know, really, really be clear about what are your skills and your skills don't necessarily need to have a certification behind them. Now, some people are just so steeped, if you will, in the traditional model that they, they would just never put themselves out there if they didn't have like a basic training in something or, you know, like this, some sort of level one of what they want to pivot into. But I, I invite you to consider that at the end of the day, most of the most successful in terms of financial success people in the world 
were not A students. Most of them were B students because they didn't color inside the lines. They didn't follow the rules. They didn't do what they were told. And it's that kind of mindset and that ability to step out of the side of the status quo that really gives you leverage as an entrepreneur. And, and that's something you can practice as well. So, you know, you don't have to invest millions of dollars in order to put yourself out there the first time. No, you start small and, and, you know, maybe the smart thing to do is to stay in the container, the traditional model, maybe, or whatever the current job you have. So you can maintain some sort of sense of security and confidence in what you're already doing and just start dabbling in this other thing that you've been secretly dreaming about experimenting with, or, you know, like that, the thing that really brings you joy and see if you can make money doing it or make a career out of doing something that at this exact moment, you don't feel as confident or you don't feel you're confident enough in it. And again, it's just the experience, the starting to do it, the um, finding a way to start taking action and get that you build that confidence from actually doing it instead of thinking about it. Like every single certification I've taken, including, you know, I've got two BAs and an MA and like, which I haven't used in 20 years. And I, you know, I am certified as a yoga teacher. I'm a detox expert. I'm a plant. Like I too went through the the certification itis stage of, of being an entrepreneur. And And at the end of the day, it comes down to, confidence more than anything and your ability to just say um yeah mom or dad or you know other person who it's really still very very strongly in this traditional model um no I'm just I'm just going to start a business and this is what I'm you know this is what I want to do and no I don't know if it's going to work it might not and that's okay it doesn't define me and and just kind of like what becomes really important is finding other people that are doing that same thing. So you're not feeling like isolated in your current situation where the, or the only person trying to break out of this box. Cause mm-hmm. that's one of the beautiful things of the online space is you can find so many, you can find your tribe and find people that are, you know, really cheering you on to do the crazy thing. The thing that like doesn't necessarily make perfect sense at this moment. Right. So we're learning now that collaboration is also a very important part of helping you to be confident. Because you need, yeah, you do need some other dreamers out there to tell you, okay, let's do it. (laughs) Let's go, let's go ahead instead of, yeah. Or introducing yourself to somebody who's already done it, right? And, you know, most people, I mean, that, that happens in the traditional model as well, where, you know, you reached out to someone who was a um, mentor in some capacity and they helped you, you know, they kind of showed you the ropes where it's like, Oh no, like, I don't know how many people I've heard in corporate that are that, that keep that early in corporate right straight out of doing their, you know, MBA. It's like, no, no, no one knows what they're doing. (laughs) Everyone thinks that this, said program is going to give them like complete clarity on what they're going to be doing in their day to day. And that just isn't the reality. Like there's just so many different job descriptions or, you know, things going on that you are going to be learning all along the way in whatever you choose. And it's just, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, one, one essential part of, of feeling better about yourself is taking better care of yourself. And that's one thing that I always go back to, which is, you know, if you feel good, then it's a lot easier to make these empowered decisions for yourself and show up with more magnetic confidence. True, true, absolutely true. Okay, so we're winding down and I just wanted to find out if we had to remember just one thing about how we can be more confident, what would that be? Yeah, I think it comes back to you find confidence in taking the action instead of waiting to feel like you're ready to take that action. The act, the, the confidence comes while you're actually doing it. Nice. Okay, good. We'll remember that for sure. Okay, so let's see. In terms of your business, Megan, how do we get 
in touch with you and what programs you have. So if our, if our viewers want to learn how to become more confident and to show up more authentically, how can we reach out to you? How are we? Yes, well, you? you can find me through my website, which is meganswanwellness.com. That's also my handle on Instagram. Um, I spend most of my precious social media <laughs> aligned time on uh, Instagram and a little bit on LinkedIn. And I, you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I have um, several programs depending on what, uh, you, what stage you're at and what you really want to focus on. And uh, you could sign up on the wait list. My group program is starting in June. It's called Align and Shine. And it's a coaching container where you get the community along with the confidence and empowerment coaching and a whole lot of guest experts that come in and sort of give, give uh, tidbits from their perspective as well. Sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Oh, Megan, again, I just have to tell you, thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the world. I am so glad that we were able to cross paths and that we were able to have the conversations that we did. I sure do appreciate your, the limited time you spent on Instagram. I love it because you're there, you're doing your dances and you have all this great information. It is so, so important and energizing. So it's a great place. You don't want people like to go and, you know, on a, on a coffee break and like, yes, I want to go dance too. <laughs> <laughs> Such a beautiful soul. Thank you for choosing to do the work that you're doing. I, I do appreciate that you had the time to come on here tonight. And I can't wait to see the amazing things that you get and continue to do. So thank oh, you. Well, thank you, Anisha. Uh, it's such a sweet uh, outro. I really appreciate being here as well. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. Take care. <laughs>